Welcome to 4DM3 News, McMaster's top channel for health-related news. I'm your host, Tina Stevenson. Today we have breaking news. The Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, just announced that the Ontario government is launching the largest ever flu immunization campaign in Ontario's history as part of the Keeping Ontario Safe plan. The government is investing almost $70 million to purchase flu vaccines to deliver a robust and expanded campaign this year. 5.1 million flu vaccines have been ordered in partnership with the federal government. That's 700,000 more than were administered last year. This includes 1.3 million high-dose vaccines to protect Ontario's seniors. Let's go through what this means for Ontarians. Today we are joined by Dr. Tracy Smith, a public health physician at HealthSci Hospital, to explain a little more about the flu vaccine. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you, Tina, for having me join you. It's a pleasure to be here. You may be wondering why the Ontario government has issued this announcement. Well, the emergence of flu season poses an additional threat to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Battling the flu in addition to the second wave of COVID-19 we are currently facing could overwhelm the healthcare system. Let's delve a bit deeper into the background of this announcement. Firstly, what is the seasonal flu? The seasonal flu is a contagious respiratory illness caused by influenza viruses that can infect the throat, the nose, and sometimes infect the lungs. The seasonal flu can cause mild to severe symptoms and can even result in death. It spreads through tiny droplets when infected individuals speak, cough, or sneeze. Severe complications can arise when infected with the flu, including bacterial pneumonia, ear infections, and sinus infections. Those with pre-existing conditions, including diabetes, asthma, and congestive heart failure, are at higher risk of worsening their chronic conditions and at higher risk of flu complications overall. Age also affects your risk of having a severe illness and increased complications. Both adults over the age of 65 and young children under five have high risks of being hospitalized because of the flu. Infants under six months of age are the most vulnerable and are at the highest risk of being hospitalized with the flu, partially because infants are dependent on others being healthy as they are unable to get vaccinated. Both COVID-19 and the seasonal flu can have varying symptom severity, ranging from no symptoms, which we call asymptomatic, to severe symptoms. However, they are caused by two different viruses. Common symptoms shared by both the seasonal flu and COVID-19 are fever and chills, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fatigue, sore throat, runny nose, muscle aches and pain, headache, and more common in children, you can see more vomiting and diarrhea. Even though both COVID-19 and the seasonal flu can vary in illness severity, COVID-19 seems to cause more severe symptoms in infected individuals. COVID-19 is also often associated with the loss of taste and smell, in addition to a dry cough. The long-term effects of COVID-19 infections are still being investigated. With so many overlapping symptoms between the two viruses, it is important to understand the distinction between the two. So how is the flu vaccine developed? The most common way that flu vaccines are made is using an egg-based manufacturing process. Viruses are injected into the fertilized hen's eggs and incubated for several days to allow the viruses to replicate. The fluid containing the virus is harvested from the eggs and then inactivated, or killed, and purified. The manufacturing process then proceeds with quality testing, filling, and distribution of the vaccine. Both normal and high-dose vaccines are created. Typically, higher-dose vaccines are created for individuals age 65 and older, only. There are four types of influenza viruses types A, B, C, and D. Type A and B influenza viruses most commonly infect humans. Most vaccines are quadrivalent, meaning they contain four strains of the virus. 
two influenza A strains, and two influenza B strains. So how does the flu vaccine work? The flu vaccine causes the body to produce antibodies about two weeks post-injection. Antibodies are protective proteins in the body that bind to invasive cells, like viruses and bacteria. Flu antibodies created by the flu shot are able to identify viral flu particles and destroy them, preventing the onset of severe symptoms. While vaccine effectiveness can vary, Recent studies show that the flu vaccination reduces the risk of flu illness by between 40 and 60 percent among the overall population during the seasons when most circulating flu viruses are well matched to the vaccine. Therefore, getting the flu vaccine does not absolutely mean you will never get the flu. Some possible side effects of the flu vaccine include soreness, redness, and tenderness or swelling at the site of infection, or a low-grade fever headache, and muscle aches may also occur. A common misconception about the flu vaccine is that it can give you the flu. Flu vaccines are made with inactivated viruses and thus cannot cause infection. Someone could get the flu shortly after getting that vaccine if they are exposed to the virus within the two weeks of getting the vaccine. This is because it takes the body two weeks to develop immune protection against the virus. So why should you consider getting the flu vaccine, especially this year? Well, here are four reasons to consider. Firstly, it reduces the stress on the healthcare system. By getting the flu vaccine, you will protect yourself and others from the influenza virus and the complications related to it, thus helping make hospital resources more available for patients with COVID-19 during the second wave of the virus. Secondly, it better helps identify the symptoms of COVID-19. Since the influenza virus and COVID-19 share so many of the same symptoms, it may be difficult to determine which of these two viruses someone may be suffering from without conducting a formal test. By getting the flu vaccine, you have significantly reduced the risk of contracting the flu. Therefore, if you are experiencing these symptoms, you can immediately begin self-isolation as it may be COVID-19. Thirdly, it decreases the risk of co-infection and secondary infection. While there is still much unknown about co-infection, which is the occurrence of being infected with both COVID-19 and the seasonal flu at the same time, the few cases of co-infection seen internationally early in the pandemic have resulted in significantly worsened health outcomes. People who have the flu or COVID-19 are more susceptible to bacterial infections, which can lead to serious disease and even death in some cases. Protecting yourself from the flu protects yourself from these other infections as well. And lastly, the flu vaccine remains a strong line of defense for you and others' health. Even if you think the flu vaccine won't benefit you, it will help protect at-risk populations around you. This concept is known as herd immunity. When a large proportion of the population is immune against an illness, making the spread of the illness from person to person is less likely. Well, that brings me to the end of my segment. I apologize if I went over time, Tina. I'm just so passionate about spreading awareness. No, thank you, Dr. Smith, for your incredible insight. I hope more Ontarians consider getting vaccinated this year as we all play a role in protecting each other. That's all for today, folks. Catch us next time on 4DM3 News, McMaster's top channel for health-related news.